In God's eyes, you are everything. In God's eyes, you are the epitome of all creation. Think about this for a moment. There is no creation greater than that of the human being. To put it into terms that we could probably all relate to, we are all God's greatest masterpiece. We are the Mona Lisa. We are the being and perhaps the most perfect representation of God on earth. Whether you look at the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the four elements, all of the various different landscapes, whether it's the deserts, the mountains, the forests, the oceans, even all of space itself. Nowhere will you find the presence of God more clearly than within the infinite boundaries of a human being. And so this is why it's sometimes so sad when you see someone, or more especially when you yourself feel like you are not enough, you are not worthy. It's so sad because nothing could be further from the truth. The line that always comes to mind is, is Rumi's, you're a manuscript of a divine letter. You are God. God lives within you. God is working through you. And so how can you feel unloved? How can you feel incomplete? How can you feel unworthy or unwhole? No matter what you've done, no matter what hardships you've gone through, no matter how many times your heart has been broken, you are 100% and perfectly complete. What prevents us from realizing that, of course, is the perspective that we have, is the layer of thoughts, the veil, as it's commonly known, that is sitting right above our eyes and preventing us from seeing the actual truth. This is one of the great struggles in life, how God has given humanity everything, but has left it to humanity to discover that they have everything. has left it to humanity to discover that they are everything. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, another phrase that comes to mind often is become nothing and he will make you everything. But that's not what we do, right? Imagine going to someone and saying, just stay still. Don't do nothing. Just don't think, don't do. God will make you everything. How many of us will actually listen to those words? We make life complex. God is very simple, though. We already have the, kings, uh, the keys to heaven, the keys to inner peace, the keys to nirvana. It's all right here. There's nothing more needed. And yet we strive and we build and we pursue and we, we go about our daily, our daily lives and we're, we're just grinding and grinding and grinding. And of course, we experience disappointment. We experience the emotional roller coasters of being a human being. We experience all of these things and inevitably many of us, in fact, all of us will experience a period or a moment of deep despair, deep sadness. In the medical world, you know, we might label this as depression. But if we think about this, the way that I see it, 
and I'm not trying to speak about it from a medical perspective because I don't have that expertise or that knowledge, but more so from a spiritual perspective, there is no reason for unhappiness other than the thoughts that we have. The thoughts that we have perhaps not full control over, but have a control over what we accept and what we believe and what we hold to be true. So this feeling of being incomplete or not whole or unloved or not worthy, this stems from nowhere else than our own mind. Even if you don't have, you know, a lot of times people think, well, that has created a, you know, it's been created by a situation or it's been created by a person. If I love someone, quote unquote, and I want to be with them, but they don't want to be with me, then they broke my heart, right? It's never that I maybe attached myself too much to this fantasy of being with this person that I willingly gave my heart to be broken. We never see it that way. We externalize, and then we might, on the flip side, then internalize and be like, well, then maybe I'm unlovable. Maybe there is a quality in me or something that prevented me from being with this person. And again, nothing could be further from the truth. None of these things are true. What is true is that we will not find that sense of completion, that sense of fulfillment, and anything or anyone, but within the confines of this person that you're seeing in the mirror, of this essence. And that's why, you know, things like self-love, self-care have become so popular these days. It's more than just a buzzword. It's more than just, you know, carving out time for yourself to do your favorite activities. It's more than setting boundaries. It's more than all of these things. It's about realizing your true essence. And this extends, you know, this is something that we as humans have been grappling with since the beginning of time. So it's not like this is something new or this is some, you know, uh, new age spiritual thing that has just cropped up over the past couple of decades. It is, it is the very fabric of why we're here to discover that, to realize that we are already complete because we are already the most perfect creation. The imperfection lies in us. The imperfection lies in the beliefs that we have, the thoughts that we have. Those are the things that need to be created. Once we have aligned ourselves with this perfect order, this perfect sense of self, this perfect version, which is of course God, then there is no longer that unhappiness anymore. There is no longer that, that feeling of being incomplete, no longer depression, no longer anxiety, no longer chronic sadness. Everything just needs a little bit of alignment. And for some, probably more alignment is necessary. You know, maybe we have just fallen on hard times and we've just continued to beat ourselves up and up and just allowed ourselves to be the victim that we no longer see what's true and what's not anymore. But that's okay. We all have our own journey. We all have our own unique path. We all have the uh, capability of salvation, of being at peace. And when I mean by salvation, I don't mean it from a religious sense. I mean it more so from the sense of being saved from our own thoughts, not being saved from a hellfire or not being saved from a life or an eternity of punishment, but being saved from our own thoughts. Because who we are without thoughts is all we ever strive to be. If you think about why we work, why we, why we try to get money, it's to, to purchase things. It's to live a life, right? Why do we need those things? Why do we, why do we create those things? Because we, we feel like it will give us a sense of happiness. And if we achieve those things, then the mind will naturally gravitate toward what's the next best thing. I've achieved this. You know, what's, what can I accumulate more? Because I've already gotten that feeling of accomplishment. Now there's the next thing. And so you keep building, you keep accumulating, you keep piling on. But in reality, this is 
all you ever need. It reminds me of a story I once heard where, you know, this, this, uh, you know, aspiring entrepreneur is going to a beach and he sees a homeless person there. And he, you know, he, he walks up to the homeless person and they start talking and the homeless person, you know, asks him some questions. And he asks him, so what do you, what do you want to do? You know, what, you know, you're dressed up in a suit and tie. What do you want to do? And the gentleman says, well, you know, I'm, I just finished business school and I just got a job and, you know, I'm looking to grow within that company. And then the homeless guy asks them, well, what are you going to do once you grow within that company? To which the businessman responds, well, then I'll have a senior position. Maybe I, be I can become partner. Maybe I can become CEO. And the homeless person asks, okay, what are you going to do when you become CEO? And he says, well, I'll, I'll probably work for a few years, make a lot of money, and then I can leave the company. And then the homeless person asks, well, what are you going to do when you leave the company? And the businessman responds, well, I, I haven't really thought that far, but maybe I can buy, you know, a nice house by the beach and enjoy that for the rest of my life. And the homeless person just looks at him. So you mean you, you want to do and you want to work towards something that I'm already doing right now. And this is, of course, a little bit of an extreme story, right? I'm not all suggesting that we become homeless, but it just goes to show us sometimes that we lose sight of what's already there in front of us. In this example, this guy, this businessman will work probably 20, 30 years running around in the rat race, running around in the hamster wheel, chasing titles, chasing money. Probably he will have a successful career. Probably he will have a nice house by the beach one day. But by the time he achieves that, he probably will be in his 50s or 60s. And still there will be that nagging feeling of, I have something left to accomplish. And even if there's not, you wasted all this time to enjoy the beach that is there for everyone to enjoy for free, that even a homeless person can enjoy, that even a homeless person can find a sense of connection with God. That is the thing that we sometimes miss. In our daily pursuits, in our daily activities, those are the things that we sometimes miss. And so it's not about Going back to this idea, going back to this discussion of feeling loved, feeling incomplete, it's all right here. There's no more work involved. The real work, if there is work, is unlearning all those, those habits, those behaviors, everything that has created that veil, created that illusion. And it's hard. Trust me, it's, it's very difficult. We're not talking about unlearning something you learned over the weekend. We're talking about unlearning something you've learned throughout your whole life, from the time you were a toddler to now. In fact, you can almost consider life as the great unlearning. Because actually, we all learn as we grow, grow older, right? We learn from our parents. We learn from our, our, our siblings. You know, when we go to school, we learn through the school system. Then we learn through our careers and our jobs and our, and our daily living. But there will come a point when you actually have to unlearn everything. In fact, there's a beautiful quote by, I think, Ramana Maharshi that says exactly that, that the true form of knowledge, the true form of wisdom happens when you realize that you know nothing, that you have to unlearn everything. Only then can you actually achieve that sense of peace that sense of fulfillment. So this whole notion of being unloved, being incomplete, it's, it's just something that our minds have created and that society has perpetuated. Society has, you know, we've, unfortunately we've, we've gotten so accustomed now to seeing things like depression or chronic sadness as the norm that we don't try to challenge it. We don't try to see it as maybe this doesn't have to be the norm. And I know not a lot of us have maybe a ton of examples around us of people who have awakened and realized the illusion and gotten themselves out of it. But for those of you who are watching, you know, watching this video, hopefully this is a reminder and a reflection that 
that's you don't have to live your life to that standard. You don't have to live your life having these ups and downs, of, you know, these moments of elation and then moments of depression. This is a choice. And it's independent of the circumstances in your life. It doesn't matter if you're the successful businessman or it doesn't matter if you're, you're, you're the homeless person. Each can live the best life possible. Each can live the life that God hoped for when he created them in this human flesh. You know, I believe, and there's obviously certainly not a way for me to prove this, but I believe that God created all of us with the seed of potential built within or planted within. And for some of us, that seed will grow into a beautiful flower. It's just going to be evergreen and it's going to expand and grow and nourish. But for some of us, you know, unfortunately, that seed will remain dormant. It won't grow. And unfortunately, a lot of that can be due to our own negligence. Maybe we don't water that seed. Maybe we don't put that, you know, patch of soil in an area that can receive sunlight and other nutrients. It's all on us what kind of a garden, what kind of a life we want to build and grow. So the next time you feel like you're down, or let's say you know someone in your life who is down, who feels like, you know what, I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I'm not, realize that it's more than just a matter of boosting them in that moment. You know, that as a friend, and certainly for your own self-care, self-preservation, it is important to uh, do the things that will boost you in that moment, right? Whether that's, you know, going out for a walk, watching a funny movie, these are all great first steps. But the bigger step and the, the, the deeper self-work that is required, that cannot be replaced. That cannot be ignored. We have to uncover that greatness that lies within. If we are already the masterpiece, then what's hiding it? What's preventing us from seeing it? Is it our own thoughts? Is it our own doubts? Is it the ego that is sort of pulling the strings in the background that we haven't really spent much time understanding what it is or how it works or how it can sometimes, you know, make us feel like we're in the, in the dumpster. These are the things that we have to work on ourselves to remove that fail, to remove all the obstacles because we are already perfect. We are already complete. We are already whole. And there is nothing else needed but other than creating that alignment, taking a misaligned life, a misaligned purpose, and realigning it back to God. God is our North Star. No matter where we feel we are in the ocean of life, all we have to do is look up and find that star and point our sails in that direction. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think is one of the biggest things that unfortunately is missing in today's society is this form of self-knowledge. You know, it's not taught in schools. We, we learn every subject from, from A to Z, but we don't actually learn self-knowledge. We don't actually learn how to travel within. I don't know why we don't learn these things. I wish there was some sort of an academy or a university or even more so in, in earlier stages of life. I wish this is something that they taught that, you know, you didn't have to read a book or, or go on a YouTube channel. I mean, these are great. Certainly they contribute to the solution, but it would be wonderful if we all learn this growing up instead of just, you know, the, the basic things that will help us get a job the basic things that will help us pass a test. Those are only good to a certain degree. What will really help us in life is uncovering who we are, discovering that greatness, being connected with it, never doubting it for a single moment, feeling that presence rushing through us and not letting one single thought ever get in the way of that. That is true success. That is true education. That is true achievement. And that is a life that is lived with purpose. So I hope you take this message and I hope you take some time to reflect upon it. I don't want you to just write down in your journal, I am worthy, I am worthy, I am worthy, until your mind 
memorizes it or until it's inculcated into your being, I want you to actually go to the core of your being and see it for yourself. Experience your worthiness. Travel beneath all thought, travel beneath all worries, and you will feel for yourself what it is that I'm trying to say. If you can do this, then I feel like I have accomplished something, that I have helped someone on the path of recognizing their own inner greatness, their own infinite ability and potential. But with that, uh, I hope this video was helpful and informative and maybe even inspirational to some degree. Uh, but please let me know your thoughts. Please take a moment, if you can, to just drop a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. Um, if you have any questions, certainly, I always love hearing that or just, you know, what's kind of going through your mind as you're listening to these words, as you're letting it kind of um, marinate in your being, as you're letting it kind of just seep through. What are, what are the ideas or words or things that are just coming to the surface? I would love to hear them. But with that, I uh, thank you as always for watching, uh, especially for those of you who have been watching for some time and commenting on the channel. It is very much greatly appreciated. I know you guys have busy lives, as do I. So the fact that you can continue to listen and watch, um, be active members of this community, it's, it means the world to me, and I, and I honestly mean that. Uh, but with that, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys very soon on another one of these videos.